All right, going to do a video exposing the hyper-Calvinist cult known as the Westboro Baptist Church and their false hyper-Calvinist, basically false gospel of hate, I'll put it that way. Okay, I'm going to read some stuff that really shows and demonstrates the kind of de uh, demonic mentality that the Westboro Baptist cult has. And I use Baptists very lightly because they have very little in common with traditional Baptists. But So basically, what who are the Westboro cult? Well, I've been exposing them for quite a while. The Westboro Baptist Church is a satanic cult over in Topeka, Kansas. And they've been basically been raised up by the devil to hinder the spreading of the gospel of Christ and make a mockery of anybody who opposes the abomination and sin of sodomy. And they preached a, a hyper-Calvinistic false gospel of hate, which is in fact the corrupt fruit that came from John Calvin and his Calvinistic ideology, his Calvinistic theology. So some examples of their hyper-Calvinist wickedness are seen in these quotations by a book, uh, in a book by Lauren Drain, who is a former member of the cult. So in this first image, uh, there's a quote on the screen where it's basically shows the kind of mentality where they don't even believe in, in trying to convert people, try to win souls. The book, it says, uh, this is on in page 1340 of the book. It says, the pastor said it was the church's duty to tell our countrymen that they were doomed not to save them, but to open their eyes. Uh, this is blatantly contrary to the Great Commission. Okay, they're basically saying we're not trying to tell them the gospel. We're just trying to tell them that, that God hates them and they're going to hell. Okay. Again, blatantly contrary to the Great Commission. Jesus Christ commanded his disciples to preach the gospel to everyone. Mark chapter 16, verse 15. The apostles and disciples went everywhere and preached the gospel and had souls saved. You can see that in Acts chapter 4, verse 1 to 4. Acts chapter 8, verse 5 to 8. Acts chapter 8, verse 25. Acts chapter 9, verse 20. Acts chapter 13, verse 46 to 49. Acts chapter 14, verse 1 to 7. Acts chapter 14, verse 20 to 21, etc. The disciples did indeed warn about the consequences of sin. You can see that in Acts chapter 17, verse 30 down to verse 31. And even warned the Jews that they basically killed their own Messiah. You can see that in Acts chapter 2, verse 22 to 24. Acts chapter 3, verses 12 down to verse 25. Acts chapter 4, verse 8 to 12. And Acts chapter 5, verse 26 to 30. But this was done with the end goal of trying of those lost sinners and hell-bound Jews repenting and believing the gospel. Okay? Not to just, you know, push them away from the gospel, which is exactly what Westboro is trying to do. Okay, Another example of the complete wickedness of this hyper-Calvinist Westboro cult is in this other quotation from the book. This is on page 195, and this shows the kind of demonic mentality they have, these next two uh, quotations I'm going to show. So this is on page 195 of the book. It says, of Bissy Lauren Drain's book, it says, Megan, Becca, and Jail were telling me that they were going to recognize people who were covered in flames. I too bought into the idea that we, de we that we deserve the pleasure of watching them get their do get their due as they writhe in torment for all of eternity and every second filled with the worst pain imaginable. Just as we in heaven could see them, they could see us relishing in, gl in God's glory in heaven, making their torment that much worse. Our comments and judgments could also pass through and be heard by the hell dwellers. So saying that we're going to actually rejoice and be glad when lost sinners are, are burning and writhing in hell. That right there is demonic, plain and simple. That right there is the satanic kind, the, the, basically the satanic hatred they have. See, they have no love. They don't line up with 1 John chapter 4. Okay, There is obviously a judgment upon sinners. Okay, There is the verse that talks about, I think it's Psalms 7-11, how you know, uh, basically God's angry with the wicked every day. But God taketh no pleasure in the death of the wicked. I'll be covering scriptures on that later. But... And this other image uh, says basically, in 2005, the British satellite company Sky News produced an, an investigative film about Westboro with the use of hidden cameras, which included uh, footage of two of Fred Phelps' granddaughters, Libby and Jail. In the testimonial and footage, Libby and Jail explain that they, quote, hope and pray that no one outside of Westboro becomes elect, unquote, because they want everybody else in the world to, quote, die horribly and burn in hell, unquote. And that even if they did not believe their actions were dictated by God, they would still enjoy it anyway. So, basically, because they believe that everything happen that happens is God's will, they're saying that basically, even if God doesn't want that to happen, they still want that to happen. That right there shows the, the true spirit of Westboro. Just shows how devil-possessed they are too, by the way. Uh, I mean, quite frankly, this, this is no different than what Islam or Hinduism would say, you know? Uh, I have my notes here. This is complete wickedness and a satanic attack on the character and nature of God. Okay, uh, it, Like I said, God does judge sin. God is obviously angry at the wicked every day. Psalms 17, verse 11. You know, there are people that God does hate. God hates the workers of iniquity. Psalms uh, 5, verse 5 talks about that. But the false god of Westboro is no different than the false god of Islam or the false gods of Hinduism. But 
here's a scriptural analysis and refutation of this hyper Calvinistic wickedness of the Westboro Baptist cult, you know, Baptist. So in this, in this image I have on screen, it says basically these are, these are scriptures that show God's nature and expose the false God of Westboro. So first of all, God has no pleasure in the death of the wicked. You can see that in Ezekiel chapter 33, verse 11, Ezekiel 18, 23, and Ezekiel 18, 32. There's joy in heaven when only one sinner repents. You can see that in Luke 15, 7, and Luke chapter 15, verse 10. God wants all men to be saved, and the Lord Jesus Christ died for everybody. That You can see that in 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 4 to 6, 1 Timothy 4, 10, and Hebrews 2, 9. Uh, God's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Uh, 2 Peter 3, 9 talks about that, Acts chapter 17, verse 30 to 31, and John chapter 3, verse 14 down to verse 18. God is also full of long-suffering, patience, compassion, and mercy. You can see that in Exodus 34, verse 6, Numbers chapter 14, verse 18, and Psalms 86, verse 15. And also God is slow to anger and wrath. You can see that in Psalms 101, verse, sorry, 103, verse 8, Psalms 145, verse 8, Joel 2, 13, Nehemiah 9, 17, Jonah 4, 2, and Nahum 1, 3. You know, all these traits are completely absent with the false god of, of hyper-Calvinism and Calvinism at large and the false god of Westboro Baptist Church, which is no different than the false god of Islam or Hinduism or Catholicism. And it just goes to show how Calvinism is truly just the, the you know, it's basically the corrupt offspring of Roman Catholicism because Roman Catholicism has always had the same kind of mentality towards their enemies. You know, it just goes to show the Catholic origins of Calvinism and especially hyper-Calvinism. Hyper you know, any yeah, West World, they may, you know, speak against, they may, you know, obviously rebuke Roman, Catholic, Roman Catholicism, but they still have the same kind of murderous mentality that the uh, Roman Catholic, you know, Mystery Babylon essentially had during the Dark Ages. So this right there shows the true spirit of the West World Baptist cult. Okay, Mark, you know, they are, they are their father, the devil, plain and simple, and they're going out and doing damage to the body of Christ through their wicked nonsense. So anyway, don't be deceived by this cult. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye. Thank you.